Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today, I've got a tag video for you guys. Even though I, I, I don't know whether I was officially tagged or not. But I'm gonna do the video anyway. The topic, the idea behind this video is fragrances that I will never stop recommending. So basically fragrances that I really like. The original tag is spread out over multiple videos, so I'm gonna make a few of these. This first one here, I've got 10 different fragrances that I'm gonna go over with you guys, and nine of them lean more toward fall and winter time use. Just for me personally, I like fragrances that have a little more richness, a little more depth to them. Summertime fragrances, a lot of times, are, are kind of boring for me. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's just jump into it. first fragrance I want to talk to you guys about is the only one here that most people will say is a spring or summertime fragrance and it is green iris tweed had to be this one has lemon verbena it's got violet leaf iris ambergris sandalwood this thing is amazing it is decades old came out in the 80s but still works today still fantastic still super versatile classy masculine and actually a positive attention grabber as well. There are a bunch of fragrances that smell similar to this that are much cheaper than this. For example, Cool Water by Davidoff, everybody knows that one. Uh, Aspen by Cody, and then Armoff has some fragrances that smell similar to Green Hours Tweed as well, but there's just one G-I-T for me. This probably, along with Gucci Envy, is my favorite fragrance of all time. So Green Hours Tweed, for sure, 100%. This one I will never stop recommending. This is a masterpiece. This is a classic. This one right here, if for any reason Creed ever vaults it, which they wouldn't do that, right? If they ever vaulted it, I would immediately buy two or three bottles. So Green Irish Tweed, always gonna recommend this one. Smells like a walk in the Irish countryside, at least that's how they market it. This next fragrance is one of the best bang for your buck scents that you can buy, in my opinion. From discounters, this costs next to nothing, and by that I mean around 30 bucks, sometimes under, but for the fragrance that we're talking about, the quality that you get, that's pretty much next to nothing. It's Ancre Noir by Lalique. This one has vetiver, cypress, cashmere wood, and musk as the notes in the fragrance. And this one is dark, brooding, mysterious, rooty, woody, and a little bit earthy. If you told me that you thought this was one of the most niche smelling fragrances that you can get for cheap, I would not argue with you whatsoever. Actually, in my opinion, this might be right at the top as far as inexpensive fragrances that smell like niche or expensive fragrances. Ancre Noir really blew me away the first time that I smelled this. It was getting a lot of hype in the community back in the day, so I went ahead and picked it up, sprayed it on, and was just blown away, absolutely mesmerized by how that fragrance smelled. And actually, I've worn that to the office a whole bunch of times. Some people may not think of it as an office safe scent, but it's always worked really well for me. So Ancre Noir, always going to recommend that one, always going to put that on cheapy lists, you know, great bang for your buck lists, because I think it's just fantastic. There's also the Flanker Ancre Noir Sport, which is a little bit more approachable if you're newer to fragrances and is also super cheap. Next up, a fragrance from Tom Ford. It is Tobacco Oud. Surprisingly, this fragrance has notes of tobacco and oud. Also whiskey and spices. This one right here, this fragrance, my wife hated, hated when I first got it in. Talked about it on the channel before, but she really, really, really did not like it. For whatever reason, this was pretty much her least favorite fragrance in my entire collection, believe it or not. It wasn't this big <laughs> when I first got this fragrance, but still yet, it was pretty big. But over time, she grew to love tobacco oud. Is it maybe because I just kept on wearing it and she had to eventually just get used to it and accept it? Maybe, yeah, yeah, actually, that's pretty much what happened. But nowadays, she really likes it. Personally, I don't really find this all that challenging, but it does have oud, tobacco, spices. It's got a lot of masculine notes in here. It does have a good punch to it. 
but it will definitely set you apart. And I actually think it's really, really, really nice. I don't think that the oud is, is too overwhelming. It's got a nice bit of sweetness and booziness in there that kind of offsets anything that might be potentially assaulting to somebody's nose. I think tobacco oud is fantastic, but it's best for cold weather. <laughs> don't wear that in the summer. Okay, next up, let's go with this bad boy right here. Dior Ohm Intense. Now, this is not how the bottle is going to look if you buy it nowadays. It's going to look like this over here on my left. This is pretty close to how this smells. There's some slight differences, but not an enormous difference. Now, Dior Ohm 2020 compared to the original Dior Ohm, that's a different story, but Dior Ohm Intense at least is still pretty close if you get the new version. This one has iris and brett, lavender and cedar, and oh, this is good. This is a fantastic fragrance. I fell in love with this the first time I smelled it. It's just an amazing lipsticky, makeup-y iris. It's fantastic in formal situations. It is kind of a metrosexual fragrance. That's at least how people described it when it was new, but it's amazing. This one is really just a top tier designer release. The performance on this is fantastic. Yes, it's gonna be more expensive because it's a Dior and even from discounters, it's not gonna be discounted heavily, but it is worth every single penny. Next up, a fragrance from one of my favorite indie houses. Memoirs of a Trespasser from Imaginary Authors. And this could have just as easily been Cape Heartache, which is my other favorite fragrance from Imaginary Authors, really. They're basically just tied 1A and 1B. This fragrance has the notes on the back, just like all Imaginary Authors fragrances. So it's got Madagascar vanilla, Gaiac wood, myrrh, bergamot, benzoin resin, ambrette seeds, and oak barrels as the notes. This one is just absolutely killer. Smoky vanilla. A really nice, resinous, deep, smoky vanilla. I mean, you can look at the color of the fragrance here, and that really tells you half the story. The woods, the resins, the vanilla, all works together perfectly in this. It swirls around, really captures your attention, and in cool weather, it is a stunner and a little bit of a surprising compliment puller. This next fragrance was a big surprise for me, actually. I didn't think too much of it when it first came out, uh, before I smelled it, I should say. I thought it would be just kind of a throwaway flanker, but actually really good. And it's grown on me a bunch over the years. Hugo Boss Bottled Oud. And I can still remember one of the first things that I noticed when I got this in is that on the box, it says that natural oud, real natural oud is used in this fragrance. They really wanted to let you know that they were trying to sell it as a more luxurious fragrance. So I guess there's real oud in here. I don't say exactly how much, if I had to guess, not much. You've also got sandalwood, saffron, apple, and cinnamon in here, along with that oud note. This one takes that Hugo Boss DNA, which is basically a nice, sweet, almost apple pie kind of scent profile and then adds in that oud, that saffron, giving it a little bit, just a little bit of a Middle Eastern tinge, but while still keeping the wearability completely intact. And in my opinion, this is actually a much nicer fragrance than Hugo Boss Bottled. Now, of course, the original Boss Bottled is a, a classic at this point, and I don't know if this will ever really be considered a classic. Oh, actually, I would say definitely won't. But between this one and pretty much every Boss Bottled flanker ever, I'm taking this one. Ooh, yeah, still really, really nice, and another one for Fall and Winter. Next up, this one right here, Barbados Vintage. John Barbados fragrances have kind of a reputation for smelling, usually, really nice and having a performance that's not super great. And that's basically what this one is. This one has tobacco, suede, rhubarb, and cinnamon as some of the notes in the fragrance. Actually, it's got a whole bunch of notes in the fragrance. And this one, out of the entire Varvados line, any Varvados fragrance, I'm taking this one. This is my favorite. Now, of course, there's also Artisan Pure, which is really good for spring and summer. And if we were talking a fragrance specifically for use 
in those seasons, I would take that one over this one. But if we're just talking based off of the scent itself, this one's my favorite. Rhubarb is an underutilized note in my opinion. I really like the facets that it brings to his scent, typically. It's got a really nice tartness and it works perfectly in here. As it dries down, you get more of that tobacco, more of that suede, really enhancing the masculinity of the scent. Perfect for an evening out, as long as you don't want a fragrance that's super loud. And for the longest time, Barbados fragrances have been available at discounters for really, really cheap, you know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks on the high end. And that's another thing that really, really entices me about John Barbados fragrances. Once they hit discounters, pick them up for next to nothing, and usually, they're really good. This next fragrance is one that I know a lot of people out there don't really love, but I do. When I first got this one in, wasn't expecting a whole lot, and I tried it out and I was like, ooh, it's actually pretty nice. Then over time, it's grown on me more and more. Pure Excess from Paco Rabanne. Okay, first up, the bottle. Personally, I love it. I love the gradient. I love the way it looks. I even like this little Zippo thing going on here. I mean, it can be a little bit annoying when you're trying to, you know, spray it and this is getting in your way, but it's cool. Some people would say tacky, but I'm saying cool. This one's got myrrh, vanilla, ginger, and sugar are some of the notes in the fragrance. When you first spray this one on your skin, it's got this really nice, almost carbonated kind of thing going on, like a carbonated beverage. It's really sweet, but sparkly, and it really, really draws people in. Very alluring, very enticing, very sexy in the open. It's a big compliment pulling fragrance and it's actually pretty unique smelling as far as designer fragrances go. Yes, it has that mass appeal, that mass market facet to it, but it does its own thing. There's also a flanker to this one, Pure Excess Night, which is also solid, but between the two, this one is my go-to, really love Pure Excess. And let's go from that Paco Rabanne to another Paco Rabanne. This one in the One Million line, my favorite from the One Million line, it is Privé. This one has tobacco, tonka, cinnamon, and mandarin, as some of the notes in the fragrance. This one is for lovers of nice, sweet, spiced tobacco scents. It is more of that kind of, uh, you know, syruped, sweet, pipe tobacco kind of fragrance, but it is so, so good. The sweetness in this one hits you pretty much right away. It's not a huge surprise with this being in the One Million line because the original One Million really known for that, that sweet punch. One Million Privé, fantastic tobacco scent as long as you like really sweet tobaccos with a good amount of spice in there, obviously another fall and winter fragrance. That's gonna take me to the last one in this list and I'm sorry that this has run so long. This one's from Prada, loved it the first time I smelled it. Luna Rosa Black. It's got Tonka, Amber, Angelica, and Bergamot. That's some of the notes in this fragrance. I've described this the same way since it came out. It doesn't smell exactly like this, but it's a good way to kind of put it out there in case anybody's familiar with the scents that I'm about to mention, but in all likelihood, a lot of you aren't. <laughs> anyway, it smells a little bit like Bulgari Black, which is a little hockey puck fragrance mixed with Midnight in Paris from Van Cleef and Arpels with maybe just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of Luna Rosa Sport from Prada sprinkled in there. Midnight in Paris for the longest time was known as one of the best cheap fragrances that you could buy. And it really, really was. The presentation, awesome. The fragrance, great. And it was discontinued and now the prices have gone phew, way up. So lots of you out there, especially if you only recently started to get into fragrances, probably never smelled that one. And then Bulgari Black also for the longest time was known as a really, really solid cheapie. Not so much anymore. So while this one does have some similarities shared with those fragrances, pretty much nobody is wearing those fragrances, which means this one is going to smell extremely unique to most anybody out there. I absolutely love the way that it smells. A little bit powdery, sure, but it's dark, it's mysterious, it is sexy in its own way, and it's a fantastic evening fragrance, which you would expect from a fragrance called Black in an all blacked out bottle. So there we go, part one, the fragrances. I will never stop recommending fragrances that I love. I'll be back with part two sometime in the future. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.